Good afternoon, guys. Um, we are back again, another Thursday. Hi, Sinead. I think we are six episodes into Thursday Night Takeaway. Um, and tonight we will be joined by Pink Coombs, who's a really talented um, Malaysian British chef here in the UK. So we're just waiting for her to join. And in the meantime, welcome. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi, Levan. Hi, Kaz. <laughs> So we'll just wait for her to, to join in the usual fashion. I'm drinking tea, because I'm an old lady. Hi, Anushka. <laughs> so Ping will be joining us shortly. Um, we'll follow the usual format, which is about 30 minutes interview, getting to know Ping, and also understanding what she's been up to over this past uh, four months. Then we will have a five minutes uh, quick fire round and then for the final 10 minutes, we'll open the question, uh, the, the floor up, up for questions. So if you do have any questions at all for Ping, please pop them in the question box at the bottom, just so that we can pop them on the screen so that everyone can see them. Um, yeah, so usual format. Um, let me just have a look if she is yet on. No, she's not. I'm sure she'll be on shortly. So I don't know if any of you guys were watching last week, but we had a few technical glitches. <laughs> Hi, Carleen. Um, so yeah, hopefully not the same again this week, but let's see. You never know. Hello. Hello. Hope you guys are really enjoying the weather. The weather's been amazing this week. Um, absolutely loved it. Had a barbecue on Wednesday. Um, sat outside. It was wonderful. So happy. I can see Ping has arrived. So I'm going to um, get her to join now. Hi Ping. Hi, can you hear me? Can I you see can. me? I can, I can hear you and see you. Okay, cool. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I went on to the wrong setting, um, but um, <laughs> I'm here now, I'm here now. Good, you've arrived. So I was sat panicking slightly. Last week we had some technical glitches, so um, the uh, it was a lady called Uma who runs a tea business and she kept on um, dipping in and out, we couldn't hear her, there was a delay, and uh, so I think either Instagram or inst internet was temperamental, one of the two, anyway. But you're here now, and we can see cool. you. Cool. I can only see myself in a black box. Does uh, Can you see me all right? Yeah, I can see you fine. Can you see me? I can see you, I just can't see myself, that's all. <laughs> okay. Well, I think anyone uh, shout if you can't see um, Ping, but I can see you perfectly, so... Great, oh, how are you? Yes, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm, um, I was saying that the weather being good just makes all the difference to yeah. your mood and your will to do more. So now I'm in a good space. How about yourself? Yeah, um, I think um, for the last few weeks, it's been really, really good. Hi, Mango Tree, one of my favorite songs. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's the weather, everything is so dependent on weather, isn't it? In Britain, everything is all about, hi, Greg. Um, it's so dependent on weather. And when, every, when the weather is good, naturally, everything's easier. Everyone's happier. So um, I think it's one of those things. I think before I came to England, people always say, oh, you know, British people, they, they talk about weather a lot. Always do. <laughs> how true is that? How, how is. true... It is that I mean it's just one of those things I think you know what it is more than anything right we get weather so infrequently that like I might I personally I always I look at the weather every day to see what the weather forecast is for the week because it is so hit and miss we don't get consistent seasons so I'm always just in anticipation of the weather so um 
it's it's yeah. fun for sure it really is I mean, we have a we have a, a little mini Google Home. I think the most asked questions every morning is, "Okay, Google." Oh, I better not say that, or else it'll just answer me. Actually, um, it says, "What's the weather like today?" And then we will dress according to the weather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and so, tell me, Pink. So, how have you been over these past four very just peculiar months? Hmm, how did I pass it? Um, mm. It's been interesting, actually. It's been, um, it's been, it started off with like, what the heck is going on? Like, um, and it then started off like, oh God, what am I going to do? Um, to, okay, let's calm down. Everybody's in the same boat. Let's figure out how we're going to get through this. Um, I think it kind of up and down. I think everyone's emotions probably the same. Yeah. Like when it first happened, yeah. everyone's up and arms like, I, I don't know how to do this. This is like in history where everyone's just not sure what to do. Um, and then after a while, I think um, you kind of settle it into a routine and you're thinking, actually, everyone's slowing down. And what really uh, brings me out of it a little bit is out of the panic mode is um, I felt like um, you know let's take a step back it's actually quite nice just to slow down that you don't feel I don't feel that I have to uh, keep up with anything I just yeah. need to take this time to just relax yeah I totally agree I totally agree I've heard the term used the corona coaster <laughs> What's the so, so the corona coaster is exactly what you've just described in that you know i think for the first two weeks everyone was in the same place of what is going on like sheer panic um and feeling very restrictive and i think once you get into a routine whilst it's been still up and down you know you find your feet and you kind of navigate through and so um yeah and i i, I figure out like um you know it, <laughs> And then the kids were at school. Actually, we were a week ahead of anyone in lockdown because my um, both of my kids got ill. So we actually had to um, quarantine way before oh, the proper really? lockdown. So we had uh, probably a week or maybe a little bit more before everything's kind of shut down. So um, for us, it was a little bit longer. But then we kind of, like everybody else, try to make the best out of yeah. uh, the situation, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then now when everything's open up again, in fact, I think this time is a bit stranger to me. Like, I feel yeah. like people kept telling the term new normal, uh, which I actually felt a little bit sad that everything is gone back to normal, that we are actually gone back to normal life. Uh, but what is normal life? I mean, I, I, I hear you, I hear you, because I think, we're in a place where there are quite a few people that I know personally and now back to work. And obviously business levels and the business that was once there is no longer there for sure. So mm -hmm. it's not normal as we know it, but it's shifted. And, you know, I suppose for me, I, I only hope that I think out of this time, there's a number of people that have learned to really appreciate the little things and the simple things. Yeah. And I hope mm -hmm. that, I hope that remains that that's my hope. But, yeah, uh, I, I do hope to. And, um, you know, looking at the hospitality industry, uh, I was talking to a guy in Bath that has a cafe. And it's pretty heart wrenching to say, when things can open again, there was a huge excitement of everything's oh, open. Again. Oh, we can eat out again. But the reality is that... Oh, no. He was telling me a story of um, a guy opposite him, a restaurant, op um, you know, kind of got everything ready and open. I mean, the first day they opened, they took £60. The next day, they took £30. Yeah. And you can't survive on that. And I think people are still really anxious in going out. Yeah. Um, and then we have, obviously, uh, the no-shows, you yeah. know. Which I don't understand why. I know it's always been a problem, yeah. but it's more, more so. It's more so now that it's highlighted because we can't take walk-ins. Yeah, exactly, and and that's exactly what I read. So I read on a report that there's been a surge of pre-bookings, and with yeah. that surge of pre-bookings, there's a surge of no-shows. 
You see, I I don't get the thing where if I wanted, maybe because I have children, I can't dine out for dinner uh, as often as I wanted to. So for the places that I go, I choose very carefully where I want to go. And if I get a booking, I stick to it. Um, Even without children, when I was, you know, kind of like pre-children, I make a booking, I stick to it. If I can't go, I call to cancel. Of course, and it's so easy to cancel as well. That's the thing. Simple. It's really harming. Well, I've seen, I mean, I've seen numbers that suggest that businesses generally trading i think 40 to 50 percent down on last year's sales across bars and restaurants and this is um i think conducted by cga so it's it's really compounded because as you know uh rents and rates um i know there's conversations about freeze on business rates but a lot of the costs of running a business have remained the same Apart from at, at what capacity i mean uh, a restaurant a normal restaurant this is not um you know a, a, a restaurant near me a tiny you know, in Bath, loads of the restaurants are tiny, so they only can operate in uh, a small capacity, but yeah. your staff remain the same, your rent remain the same, your rates remain the same, so it's already a really hard um, business to go to, I guess. Um, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard at the moment, and I do feel for my hospitality friends that yeah. it's just simple that people are pledging just, if you can't go, don't and and it's not cool to make you know kind of like bookings everywhere and then decide on the day where you want to go. I've never done that in my whole life. Oh, it's just it's lack of understanding of the implications, right? Of you booking a restaurant and the fact that they have to staff it in accordance to the bookings and also have food in accordance to the bookings, and then when that doesn't turn up, then and it's wasted. It's wasted. Um, you know, for someone who, uh, when you pay for someone's wages and you pay for all the food, you see it going into the bin. Yeah. You see, uh, you can't send the staff home and save a little bit on, you know, kind of exactly. the staff levels. Um, so it, when pe- you don't have enough bucket, it's just all those things. I don't think people actually quite understand how hard it is. I agree. I agree. But I hope it gets better and I hope it's just a lack of understanding. It's just us trying to, if we talk about it more, maybe people will, will actually understand it a little bit more. Yeah, I think that, that's the hope and that's the hope with the campaign that started as well, just to bring about awareness. So hopefully it does, it does change. But um, the industry, yeah, is is interesting place. But do you want to just introduce yourself? Oh, yeah. We kind about, of, yeah, we kind of jumped in. We kind of rambled on, isn't it? Um, <laughs> My name is Ping. Uh, I, um, I'm a Malaysian chef. Um, I live in Wiltshire um, and I work as a, a freelance uh, chef most of the time. And um, I run a cookery school um, here in my kitchen here in Wiltshire. A uh, very small cookery school, hands-on, but I wanted to give people an experience of like uh, cooking with friends, really. You're not coming here to cook uh, with a teacher, you're, you're coming here to cook with me, cook with a friend, and, and other people that you might have, uh, you can eat, yeah, I guess. Um, so, um, and I run a supper club. Um, I just generally cook uh, Malaysian food and other, other foods as well. Okay, cool. And so tell us about how you actually got into to hospitality or food and drink as we know it now. So it's a little bit of an accident. I've always loved food and I always love cooking, but it's nothing more than a hobby. Uh, I remember how excited I am to move into my own flat. And I was like, yay, I can cook. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to cook in a university uh, dormitory anymore. Uh, and years gone by and I um, I was always in hospitality uh, front of house. So I did events. Um, I, my uh, degrees in hotel and restaurant management. I went to Oxford Brooks to do hospitality. Um, so hospitality has always been my passion, mm. but never really uh, back of house. Um, until, uh, until I had my daughter, my first daughter, Alexa, and, um, and uh, I was prepared to go back to work and I was made redundant. Mm-hmm. Um, I still remember it so clearly because if anyone, anyone out there that's watching has, um, you know, kind of uh, experienced redundancy, it's one of those heart wrenching feeling that it always stays with you. Yeah, it's always you're not good enough. Um, 
you know, we'll just have to let you go. Although I do understand sometimes redundancy has to be made because yeah. they just can't afford you anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, but that feeling stays. Uh, so they made me redundant and I was so ready to go back to work after having my first child. I just needed some adult conversation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, they made me redundant and a friend of mine just emailed me and said, look, just apply to MasterChef. I was so down on it, but... I always, for some reason, the voice behind my head just say, say to me, just do it. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose anymore. You don't have a good job to go back to. So, so that's what I did. I but, the form. But, but tell me this, at the point that you were applying, what did you think about your own cooking skills at that time? Did you think you were pretty good? Pretty, what, what did you think? I thought I was okay. okay. I thought I was okay. My... Uh, this is God honest truth. Like, um, my goal was not to kick off, being kicked off the first round. That's all. <laughs> Apart from that, anything else is a bonus. Really? Yep, that was my, my, my aim is very low. <laughs> <laughs> aim low, aim low. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you apply thinking, okay, as long as I'm not kicked off first, I'm good. Yeah. That's it. What happens. And you know what? All I was thinking of is like, I want to have some fun. I want to have some fun. I've, you know, the last eight months um, before that, um, the last eight months um, I was spent with my daughter, which I love. I would never, you know, uh, that. but anyone who has a young child, you just needed something else. You just need it to be you again. Yeah. Um, so I... Um, enter and when i got the phone call uh i was screaming down the line i wasn't even in the show yet i was screaming <laughs> <laughs> you imagine how long and hard i screamed when i found out that i was in the show and i do remember the first thing that crossed my mind is like my god i could stick two fingers up to my ex-employer <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I didn't think anywhere that I could I could win. It's just really? the idea of it. I didn't go in to win. I went in to have some fun. Yeah. I went in because I have nothing to lose, and it's like, you know, was it what ifs? Um, that kind of thing. I filled in the application form within five minutes. I just wrote down the first thing. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I wrote down the first thing I thought about. Uh, mm -hmm when like the question of i don't know who who do you like to cook for or something like that if you have a dinner party i can't even remember what question it was it was i think it's about 16 questions yeah. for them to get a, a gist of who you are what you like what your cooking skill is that kind of thing so i literally spent five minutes on the question because in my mind i didn't think that i would get through so in my year there were 25,000 applicants this time, you wow. know. Yeah, a lot of people want to get into MasterChef. You, you'd be surprised. Um, and it's one of those things that if I don't do it, I always go, oh, you know, what if I, you know, uh, I didn't fill in the form? What if I got in? So I didn't want to look back and say, oh, what if, blah, blah, blah. So I filled in the form uh, and the rest is history. And so... Tell me that's about... How, Go on. Yeah. That, that's how I got into the um, cooking side of things. It's just purely by accident, purely by chance. Wow. Because it's almost fated. It's, you know, it's kind of cheesy to say yeah. the door of, you know, a part of my life closed and a, a, another one that is about to open up all these opportunity that I, I never knew. Looking back, it was almost like someone's trying to tell me, it's like, don't worry about it something else is going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And then, so fast forward, um, crown champion, then you're catapulted into to a new life. It was, it was literally like catapulted and okay. no one give you any kind of uh, uh, training or yeah. they kind of warn you a bit. I remember um, sitting in a hotel um, a lobby for my finals week in Barcelona. I came down for breakfast, Greg Wallace was sitting next to me. And at that point, there were final three. So he was saying to me, you know, one of you, your life is going to go like that. And then it's kind of like, kind of like, 
you know, like that. And then it'll probably go like that, but it goes really up really quickly. Um, and that's what happened. I remember the night I won, I had my, I've lied to my, uh, all my families and friends saying that I didn't win. I didn't tell anybody apart from my husband. Really? So for four months. <gasps> really? I didn't even tell my mom I entered. I, yeah. I told, uh, <laughs> when I won, my brother texted me, I didn't know you cook. <laughs> I love it. Everyone's in my family, so I didn't know she cooks. I was like, yeah, I do cook. Uh, I don't know you cook that well. I was like, well, you know, um, and it's, it's one of those things. Uh, I kept it because I knew I wanted a great impact so I can keep a secret. So, um, I didn't, I told my husband, tell everybody I didn't win. And because they didn't want me to get sad, so they didn't ask. So we sat around uh, and watched the final. And then my sister-in-law screamed so much. I was like, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, my God. And it was the impact that I wanted. It was the impact that I wanted. It was the surprise mm -hmm. that I wanted for everybody. And that kind of worked. And literally the next day, um, less than 24 hours later i was sitting on top of some building doing some kind of interview for the sunday times i was having my hair done and I couldn't imagine. Other, um and i was standing up there thinking what has just happened yeah um and eight hours of back-to-back -back interview mm, I, I was just what is going on um yeah. and it's just catapulted um wow. into this world and then after all it died down a bit, I, I hid for three months. <laughs> did you? I did. I was like, I don't, I, I, uh, you know, there is no rule book. There weren't any books to say, when you've done this, um, you have to do A, B, C. You're going to open an Instagram account. You have a Facebook mm -hmm. a website. Nowadays, you get people to help you do that. You get some advice, but no one sits you down and say, look, I think it's good for you to have that, have that, have that. You're not allowed to have an agent. You're not yeah. allowed to have this, 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 and this. No one sits you down and say, look, you've got to have all of this yeah. right to, to take advantage of that moment when you win. Nobody said to me that. And, and, no, and then I remember sitting here there, and then what? You know, I've never been in this situation before. Everyone won a piece of me and um, loads of people offer me work. Uh, lots of people offer me, um, expect me to work for free. And that's another thing. Really? Oh, lots. I still, I still have it now. I and if you talk to anyone in the food industry, there are so many people who, who expect you to work for free. Wow. That's amazing. Um, and they will say I'll things, too, I will, I will, uh, you know, help with your profile. I will help. So I need you, I need you to do this, 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 and this. It was a long list of things. And then, and then when you said, um, you know, and at that point, you're kind of really grateful that people want you. I go to a place where I'm really grateful that someone um, wants me to work, you know? Yeah. And I was like, but, but they want me to work for free, but that's okay because they are they are um, offering me profile, you know? I felt like at yeah. one short kind of like moment where I felt like I'm really grateful for the work, but actually, hang on a second, you know? Uh, nobody should work for free. Absolutely not. If you've got a skill and expertise that they want, then they absolutely should cough up that cash. And so, interesting with what you've said. So if you were to go back to that time, what advice would you offer yourself? Um, I would say that I would look at it and say that it, you know, you, you got here for a reason and everyone has got a value. And I would actually tell myself that you, you, you do add value and that's why they're coming to you. And um, even now when someone asked me to do something, I was like, Oh God, you know, can I do it? I, I suffer, I think, with a lot of self-doubt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, last year, I got to cook for um, a whole lot of uh, people on board the Eastern Oriental Express. Wow. For And when I went onto the website, I saw a whole host of 
chefs that has Michelin star that has yeah. you know that has cheese something and then I thought oh my god is I I'm very little in this world um yeah I'm little, well I'm no one mm-hmm. um can I do this can I do this mm-hmm. I went on it I I I remember feeling really unworthy in a way I still feel very unworthy yeah. but I went on it I I think I I did a good job and um, everybody enjoyed the food. I enjoyed the experience. I mean, if you've never cooked on a train before, it's another whole level. I can only imagine. But so, so how do you overcome that, that self-doubt then? Because I think we all have it for sure. And I think us women have it more than men, I believe. Um, but what, how, how do you overcome it? Because you're still able to, to push through that and still do what you need to do. I think the self doubt self doubt is always going to be with you. I don't think it's something that you can eliminate. Yeah. Um, how I do it is I ask myself, like, you know, kind of accept the job, ask questions later, learn along the job, okay. <laughs> because that opportunity may not come again. Mm. So I don't want to miss anything, you know. Um, and when I first won uh, Master Chef, I remember saying to myself. And my husband and I said I really want to have some fun it's kind of like my motto really yeah. I want to have some fun for the first few years I'm going to choose the jobs that may not pay well but lots of fun yeah or um, jobs that can be fun and paid well as well bonus but it doesn't <laughs> actually always yeah. end up or I accept jobs that are purely for experience. So I have rules, uh, what kind of a job that there is. Yeah. And I I just think that, you know, if I have an opportunity to do it, um, and I'm not afraid to ask for help. So if there is something that I really can't do it um, and needed help, then I would. And if I accept it, I would make sure that I do really, really well to the best of my capability. Oh, nice. That's interesting. I love the way that you kind of compartmentalize the different opportunities on what you're taking from them, which is... Um, I uh, think it's a two-way thing, isn't it, Lorraine? I think um, when people present me with an opportunity, sometimes I think... Um, uh, sometimes I always think, oh, is it a little bit too petty to say, what is it in for me? But if I don't enjoy it, either financially or experience-wise, then why would i do it absolutely i always describe it as it has to be mutually beneficial yeah and I, tick, mm-hmm. yeah go on and i was gonna say it can't tick one of the two parties boxes it has to tick both yeah i mean no. sometimes opportunities come and they're all not always perfect near enough times they're not always how you want it to be but i try to make the best out of it and um as long as i don't hate it like yeah jobs that I probably just hate the sound of it but because it pays well I'll do it but um it's just something that if I don't if I hate it totally then mm. then I would do it anyway mm. uh, but you know the the best ones are the ones that are really and I have some fun in my in my line of work and also get paid as well yeah. and I really appreciate that someone who comes to me that outlined um, the job. So this is what um, the job is. We don't have a budget. Uh, We don't have a budget to pay you this. However, we can offset it with this, 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 and and then they just outline everything. What is it for us? What is it for you? And then I can make a decision. Um, And quite often people just come around to have... um, you know, we want you to do this, 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 and then they stop. I was like, and how much are you going to pay? <laughs> I know. And oh, it, yeah. That makes it awkward for you to I then know. go back and say, um, and it's going, you're going to have a fee. It just makes it awkward for me because I hate talking about money. I don't think anyone is comfortable yeah. talking about money. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I see it all the time, and I see it all the time, even in terms of partnerships. Uh, where businesses will come and ask for things but don't know or have no idea what they want to give in return (laughs) and I just think well surely you've done your homework before approaching for this conversation but maybe not I don't know it's difficult to figure out but I guess 
And it really is annoying, isn't it? I mean, in this way, in this uh, time, uh, you know, in, in this world, everything's online in social media. Even if you spend five minutes doing your research, yeah. you know that um, what the person is, and most importantly, where the person is based and what their line of work is. I get a lot of annoying um, um, requests where they go, Oh, I really wanna. I really want to do some work with you, and um, I really like what you do. Uh, and can we have a meeting? Uh, uh, come see me in my office in Kuala Lumpur. I was like, <laughs> oh, can you gonna send a jet plane? Yeah. Um, uh, just so that you know, I'm based in the UK. Oh, oh, I thought you were in Malaysia. Okay. It's like, <laughs> yeah. God. All, all the tools and resources are there online, you know, to just do a bit of homework. <laughs> It just makes me really annoyed because if I'm like the person who is paying this person to engage in a PR activity, loads of people say, oh, can I send you a box of goodies to try? Oh, we're in Malaysia. Oh, sorry, you're too far for us to send. <laughs> I mean, that really annoys me because it annoys me because her employer or his yeah. employer is paying this person to do a job to promote their brand and they just don't care. Yeah. They have no, no care and that annoys me. Yeah, they're doing a, a poor job representing the company. Yeah, and it doesn't annoy me because they wasted my time. <laughs> and yes, yeah. it annoys, I'm annoyed for the company. Yeah. <laughs> they employ some novelty. That's nice of you. <laughs> Good question. So um, you've got two daughters. Is it, it is two daughters, isn't it? I have two daughters, yeah. yeah. Are they are they showing a keen interest in cooking and food? Yeah, they do. They 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 love it. Um during the 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 um, beginning of the lockdown, uh Alex and I do lots of cooking together. We try to do um but um so I did Zoom classes with her friends and oh, she's very lovely. Yeah, she makes mean dumplings, she can pleat the dumpling really well. Um yeah, and okay. things like that. Um Luna is a little bit young, but um, she loves cupcakes. We did cupcakes today. Baking is quite a good one for little ones, which yeah. is good. But um, she loves like flipping pancakes and she, they both love food, which I'm very lucky, I know, but yeah. they don't have a choice. Like <laughs> since young, they're like, e I have this and you're going to eat this. If you don't eat this, you're going to go hungry. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's good. That's... Well, that's how I was brought up. Yeah, my mom me too. Me too. There was no other option other than what was on the plate. But, yeah. um, oh, lovely. Oh, nice. And so, as we start to move back to the new normal, what what's the future looking like for you? Or what, what is it that you're looking forward to getting back to? Well, I figure that I have to keep on cooking because that keeps me sane. And it could, the more I cook, the more... I uh, have this creativity as well. So um, eight weeks ago, uh, during like still the lockdown, I think it must be eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks ago, my husband and I decided one evening that we're going to try maybe doing a little bit of delivery around the village. Everyone's bored. Um, we live in a nice village uh, and um, there are a few villages within two miles here. Yeah. So we decided we're going to put on our Facebook village Facebook page. We're going to do this. We're going to trial for the next three weeks to do this delivery. We thought we're just going to have some orders that keeps me busy and keeps me cooking and keeps me kind of like, you know, my mind working. And uh, it just went crazy. <laughs> it just... And then the first week we were like, Oh my God, I couldn't keep up. Uh, you know, doing delivery is hard, man. I can imagine. Oh my God, it's hard. And we, we put it in the uh, Facebook. It's like, oh, delivery is between five and six. And then we, I think the first week, we, we had 35 deliveries wow. to do. Oh my God. 35, I think it must be 35, 40 yeah. deliveries. And Andrew, my husband, went out with the phone, mapped out where everybody is. Okay, it's only within two miles around here mapped out everywhere is and um when he got to the neighboring village uh which is only 10 minutes away yeah. there is no phone signal so it wiped out everybody's addresses 
And luckily, he has a memory for where people live because he's already mapped out. So he knew kind wow. of well. I mean, it's like I was like, wow. For me, I wouldn't have a meltdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left at five, we said five to six. He didn't come home to half past eight. Oh, bless him. <laughs> and. People were messaging me going, where is my food? It's not a problem. I'm really starving. I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Because the food is actually delivered to be chilled anyway. So it's chilled. So they heat it up. So it's not like a uh, hot food where it's going to go. But I, uh, with all my experience of the last five years, I learned something new every single day. I mean, that weekend we were dead. We were like... I have served hundreds of people. I've done weddings. I've done. I cook on the train for God's sake, you know. Um, to head of state, I was like, "This by far is the worst experience." Really? Is that amazing? Boston. We were, because the kids were at home, so we had to tag team it. So if I cook, he looked after the kids because we are keeping it between us. Nobody like touches anything. Yeah. Um, and I was with the kids; they were hungry. I was like, "Where's Daddy?" I was like, "I don't know." Um, it was, yeah, it was hard. After that, we we kind of learned our experience about this whole delivery business, and yeah. I, I spoke to a few of my chef friends, and they were like, "Yeah." Delivery is hard work. Wow. And so he continues respect for Uber drivers, just eat drivers, you know, delivery drivers. I have newfound respect for them. Oh bless. And so are you still doing that or Yeah. Are you? So we do it every Friday. Okay. But we're going to have a break soon because I I noticed that I'm actually quite enjoying coming up with dishes that are has to take lots of boxes and people were really enjoying it and that gives me so much joy to see that I actually could uh, be a part of their Friday night curry or you know we cook everything fresh. Um, hi Zaliha, um, cook everything fresh and I enjoy doing it because for cooking meals that are in a supper club or in a restaurant, it's 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 not easy, but you get your fresh fruit, you do your prep. When the when the order comes in, you deliver the food, you garnish it, you tell a bit of a story, you mm. you put the plate down, and you give them a little bit of story. You're like, this is from where, and there's like, this is a part of the experience, right? But with boxed food, your box arrives in front of you. And your box tells everything they want to know about you. And I find that really hard. I'm not there to tell you a story yeah. about yeah. it. And you can't make the dish garnish with flowers or whatever it is because it's chilled. Of and once you eat it, it's going to turn into mush. Yeah. So it has to take, yes, it has to be delicious. That's yeah. first. It has to chill well, yeah. second. Um, it has to reheat well and still tastes amazing, but thick. And it's like, how am I going to produce this, chill it, and get it into in front of the customers that tells most about you? It's really difficult. Yeah, I can imagine. And so, so is the future for Ping um, going national with this uh, home delivery service? <laughs> I like to. We have some requests of like, you know, doing chill meals or frozen meals, which I would love to actually be able to to do a ping at home and send them nationally. Yeah. But we are developing that idea, uh, hopefully, and um, maybe starting with some ambient products. Um, because I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy the fact that I could possibly send it to people who are not living near me. As much as I enjoy, like, you know, ordering something from London who, who I miss eating out but can't get there. So I guess for them to miss my food or wanted to try my food, I have an opportunity to you know, showcase what I do yeah. in a box. Yeah, of course. But I assume your husband won't be doing the delivery. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's right. we haven't actually. People say, "Oh, can you come to Bath? Can you can you do this?" I was like, "No," because at the same time, we want to be able to produce a food at high quality um, and able to deliver it at a a good amount of time. And equally, um, 
we want to spend some time with the girls um so we could work 24 7 to produce this Mm -hmm. however i don't want to do that i want to be able to have a work-life balance as well so um i try to 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 do that as much as i can while they are younger yeah Uh, especially you know now where it's so uncertain um we just want to be an anchor for them yeah which is lovely it's lovely yeah. as you say you know you, you'll never get those years back right exactly yeah. it's not something that you can bank you know it's not it's not money you know yeah. you can't have interest in it you can't bank it okay. but, uh, you know my my cookery school is restarting in october yeah. so, cool. which was really nice um yeah. So we are about to start, um, the dates are going up tomorrow. We are about to start a, a series of virtual classes as well. So I've been doing a lot of those. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, so virtual classes on Ping's Master Club and also a hands-on one here. Okay. Um, that's kind of like my going to be reopening in October. Brilliant. Developing a range for Ping at home to for people to enjoy yeah. national hopefully. Nice. Brilliant. All exciting. And it is. So um, we're going to move to quick fire round now. Um, just to ask anyone, if you do have any questions at all, please pop them in the question box at the bottom. And so quick fire round is, as described, it's, I'll give you two questions and you tell me which of the two you prefer. Okay. Simple as that. Really simple. So the first is scrambled or fried. Um, hi, and us uh, fried. Fried. Um, goat or venison? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Goat or venison? Oh, goat. Um, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Spicy or sweet? Spicy, always. Of course. Of course. <laughs> water <laughs> or fire? Uh, fire. Oh no, water, water, water! <laughs> um, lime or lemon? Lime. Pudding or cake? Pudding. Uh, rice or noodles? Rice. Oh, mm, mm, can I have both? <laughs> you can't. No, you can. You can, <laughs> because you're a guest. You can have them both. Um, and last but not least, chicken or pork? Pork. So, um, can I ask you another question, actually, about ingredients and cooking? So, are oh. there one or two particular ingredients that you love to cook with and show up commonly throughout your your kind of recipes and and what you you create so one of the things that are um that i always encourage people to have is lettuce um because it's really strange right i have so many ingredients but um if there is one kind of like uh ingredient that actually is really useful to have in your fridge is lettuce, uh, be it romaine, um, iceberg, or baby gems. I always have either one of these three in my fridge because they can be your salad or they can be roasted and they could be stir fried. So I pull out the cabbage, uh, the, 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 the lettuce, and I go, what should I have today? So you buy one and you can have three different types of how to cook them. So it's really useful to have. And it's so simple, so overlooked. And some people just use lettuce for salads, but mm-hmm. it you don't have to be. And you can actually cook them in your soup. Yeah. Um, you can roast them in your oven with some butter and chicken stock. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, um, it's something that I encourage people, you know, you, you <laughs> someone say, add lettuce to shopping list. <laughs> Um, I, uh, you know, I did a ping at home, uh, I char grill, I basically, uh, did baby gems and I split it into half, Yeah. I brush it with some oil, be it garlic oil or vegetable oil, not, yeah. not olive oil yeah. because it burns really easily. Right. And I char it on a griddle pan. You can do it in a barbecue. Yeah. You, uh, char grill it and, um, you serve it with like a spicy sauce or, uh, I serve it with satay sauce. I oh, make a peanut sauce and I, uh, serve it with that. So, uh, someone say, um, never stir fried lettuce before. Ray, it's super simple. All you need is a uh, little gems, romaine or iceberg, you know, kind of tear them into big leaves, uh, chuck loads of like, uh, garlic into oil. 
um, and then put the lettuce in, sprinkle it with a bit of water to create the steam and kind of really stir fry it into wok with oyster sauce or a little bit of soya sauce or a bit of salt. And it's delicious. Absolutely. Oh. Everything. It goes with Asian food. It goes with anything that you want. So do add lettuce in your shopping list because it's it's something that is, it's always going to be in your shopping supermarket. Yeah, very true. It's something that I have to try. And um, favourite foods, Malaysian, your favourite food? Or is there another cuisine that trumps that? Um, it will, if it's not Malaysian food and it's not my mum's cooking, then it has to be either Japanese or, uh, Italian. Okay. Okay. Nice. I, I cook a lot of those at home as well. So yeah. this evening, actually, we have Italian. So I try to take my kids somewhere in, 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 in another country. Um, so we did uh, chicken saltimbocca. So we talked about a little bit about what it is, yes. uh, what it means, and just try different flavors. Oh, that's lovely. And are there any no goals then? Are there, are there any um, foods that you avoid or? Um, I never, this sounds really, um, I, I love baked beans. I love toast. I can't have baked beans and toast. Why not? <laughs> Can you see the effect? I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I love those two things Definitely. separately. I just can't have them together. And uh, people say, oh, have surely you have baked bean on toast when you were at uni. I was like, no, never. <laughs> I hardly even have cheese on toast. Oh, really? I have them now, but um, when I was at uni, um, if you talk to any other Asian um, kind of um, students, they will say instant noodles. Instant noodles rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, I, I, I'm Asian. I love uh, instant noodles and, um, and pimped it up with lettuce. Oh yeah, I mean, I think everyone's getting really excited about the lettuce. I've never cooked le lettuce either, so no, you don't. Uh, no, you got to try it. You got to try it. I will. I will. I will. Believe me, you have got to try it. I mean, um, I'll um, I'll I'll post a recipe soon. It's really really simple. It's just oil in the pan, hot garlic, yeah. lettuce, a bit of oyster sauce. Yeah. Uh, that's it. And just as they wilt, fry them in hot, hot, hot oil. Yeah. As soon as they wilt, take it off the heat because the residual heat will, um, will just um, cook it and you still have that crunch as well. And just that, add a bit of fried egg, you're sorted. That's what I, I actually did it for my kids the other day. It's yeah. like, um, you know, um, really simple fried eggs with sweet soy sauce and uh, stir fry lettuce. My mum always does stir fry lettuce for us and, or even poached lettuce. You poach it, um, okay. you know, you boil it. And then as soon as it wilts, it takes it out. And then she dress it in garlic oil um, and a bit of oyster sauce. Nice. And when we're ready to eat, you toss it like a salad and yeah. it will the garlic oil and it's just so tasty oh it sounds amazing so versatile so yeah. do get yourself some letters we will indeed um and i'm gonna just check if we've got any questions i can't see anything in the box um and you can't so, eat the noodles i think someone said <laughs> i know i saw um yeah oh brilliant and so we don't have any questions, but it's been um, amazing as always to talk to you, Ping, um, and great to hear how you've been getting on and also what's coming for the future as well. Um, Thank you for having me. No, it's been, it's, been, it's been great and it always is. So in terms of timings for the range that you're developing, is there an expected time frame as to when we'll be able to get them or is it just kind of in development stage at the moment? I think it's in development stage at the moment. Uh, the ambient stuff is a little bit easier. Um, just that I wanted to develop something that people want to eat, want to, we want to buy. Um, and I guess, again, this self-doubt is coming uh, in. Like, you know, there are so many products out there. Yeah. Would they want to buy more products? You know, it's not revolutionary. Yeah. Um, 
but it is mine and it is, you know, what I cook and what I produce. So it's that self doubt. And what has taught me over this few months is I think you just, we just have to go for it. I mean, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But I do feel sometimes when it doesn't work, it kind of like, I feel beaten about it. But, you know, I just, I just got to give it a try. Yeah, you absolutely must. Well, I think you'll, uh, well, I'll be your first customer for sure. And I think you'll have, <laughs> you'll have a few more in the, uh, in the um, audience. We have got one question. <laughs> um, okay, who is your favourite MasterChef winner? Oh, <laughs> who's my favourite MasterChef winner? Oh, God. God, uh, I... I don't, I don't have one. <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> I you, love them all. You, you, you love them all. I do. It sounds a little bit like tactful, doesn't it? <laughs> I love them all for different reasons. Yeah. I really do because they are so, they're so different and they each bring something different. Yeah. Uh, and I think I also love the process of them getting every year. I'm amazed at the level of like it's not just the champions it's also um the the people who have got through the finals uh, the semi-finals um because i think it's so hard work you know mm. the day that you it could be just down to um you know what you did that day um and they're no less of a champion they're yeah. all amazing yeah. cook this year I looked at what they did. I was like, oh God, I don't, I don't think I'll be able to do that. It's just mm -hmm. what an amateur cook can do with a little bit of guidance and a little bit of power yeah. as well. And I think the standard has, you know, kind of sky high since I have joined. Um, and I, every year I kind of ask myself, hmm, if I am a contestant this year, where would I get through? <laughs> Oh, brilliant. But so would you say that you work under pressure really well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I was just talking to Angela who today, uh, who was in my year and she was in the top five and um, she's the only lady left between, you know, three guys and me. Uh, so top five and we're all still friends. Uh, and I visit her. She lives in Wales and she, she does amazing uh, skincare and her name's Angela Langford. Um, okay. And uh, she, and I was speaking to her today, we were catching up because I'm going to see her in two weeks and we were just discussing what we're going to eat and drink. Blah, 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 blah. And um, I say, how are you? And she's like, oh, we've been really busy, but you know, uh, now that I can actually relax a bit, I don't work very well. I can only work well in, in under pressure. Yeah. I was like, this is so me. I could understand where you are. If I don't feel the blade of time yes. on my neck, I, I can't go. Like, I can't, I can't get myself doing stuff because yeah. I always, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's always tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I'll do it later. Everything under the sun, just not to do that piece of work that I was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah she's like that and i'm like that and we kind of totally understand now we know i know why we why we work so yeah. well yeah yeah that's interesting because i love under pressure the more pressure i get the better i perform okay really oh wow i know sometimes i'm so stressed but the more stressed i am the better i am at something yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, i'm worse at is when i have a lull oh, and i yeah I'm, what do I need to do? Nothing. I could happily wander around in my pajamas all day. <laughs> I've got a, a question here that I see. What yeah. do you like to go with Malaysian cooking? Um, I have, I've been, during these few months, have been really uh, liking cider. Mm -hmm. um, cider, really, really cold. Mm -hmm. uh, Beer is always good. Uh, a bit of bubbly. I'm always queen of bubbly. Yeah, um, love it. Bubbly. Yep. Um, and for wine, I love a Gruner Vetlana. Um, I think that's really nice. Or Riesling, or you know, um, that's kind of like I love. I love a drink, oh, and I really nice. love yeah. an aperitif as well. And I've taken into drinking Afro spritz. Oh, I love them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So refreshing. So refreshing. I I want to have one now. <laughs> 
that, but, but that, is that water you're drinking? Uh, we've got one more question for you, Ping. Um, do you have a brand that you look up to as a role model? Oh, many. Like food brands or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just says brand. I assume it means food. Yeah, I assume it means food. The brand that I really like that I think that they, um, you know, really have done from restaurant to... Uh, their identity as a whole and I think I look up to that and I I'll be very proud if I if I have that it's Pao you yeah. know the 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 company Pao. yeah and I think what we've done is I know there are a lot of beautiful companies out there but they started with a strong identity and they it carries through throughout their brand yeah it kind of like everything they touch you you just know it's them yeah yeah. And a very strong identity from t shirts to bags. Yes. I just think I just think it's really clever. It's really simple, but they've stuck to their branding. Now I am trying to actually, you know, kind of look up to them and see what they do so well. Mm. Um it's like they've it's just it's just so strong. It's yeah. it, it's just beautifully designed yeah, it um, yeah. kind of marries really well with the identity it's just you know it's just brilliant yeah yeah Brandon is, is... I like it. say again sorry I like it oh, yeah yeah no no I understand I know exactly why what's your story do what? you have that's a good question um I wasn't prepared to answer question thing um a brand I love put you on the spot there yeah you have but i do love i love the shoe oh oh yes love the shoe i do too and you know i think gone are the days where in my mind um chains or multiples we'll call them that sat in a, a compartment which i very rarely touched but yeah they have yeah. elevated um everything that is attached to i mean they are the food quality is amazing i love the environment i love actually um how they train their staff as well so mm. their teams go to india um they immerse themselves in the brand itself and i've been a huge fan since there were i think there was one or two and and to where they are now there's one that's just recently opened in my hometown birmingham Oh, wow. You um, lucky. Yeah, so I'll be going uh, next month to try for sure. But um, yeah, I love I love that brand. Really do. And I love everything they stand for as well. I know. I would love, love, love if I... If you ask me, like you say, you say what brand is like their identity is about. But if you ask me, like, if you want to have a Malaysian equivalent, that... I think what you said about Dishoom is so true. It's like everything about them is you walk into the cafe yes. and the smell. Yes. It's amazing. Like, mm -hmm. and I love how they design their restaurant according to where they are. So they, they, they take the kind of identity of like in Coma Garden is a bit yes. different, very, uh, different to another one in Edinburgh. Yeah. For the, the interior is not the same but it also kind of marries well with the area yeah. where they are it's very and their the, the whole cafe culture yeah, it's and it's wonderful. all fun yeah it is it is it is it is it is I really adore that brand and I've, I've heard really great things about who they are on the inside as well in terms of head office and the team that run it and that that mirrors on the outside but um, we have uh, one minute and seven seconds left Oh, cool. <laughs> so, I'm so fast. It really, really has. Um, it's been wonderful catching up with you again, King. And I'll definitely reach out. Um, we'll definitely have to catch up again soon. Thank you for your time. It's always great hearing your story and where you've come from and where you're going and excited to sort of witness that as well. So keep us up to speed with how that goes. Will do. We'll definitely do. And right. thank you having me and thank you for all the people that come and 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 listen to to me rambling on about stuff <laughs> never rambling never rambling all right Ping, have a good evening i'll speak to you soon all right sure lorraine all right take care bye bye, bye guys bye